Welcome to the Daily Dispatch. Today we'll take you to Germany, where a plot was foiled to overthrow the German state and replace it with a monarchy. Next on the Dispatch, we'll tell you about the increasing attacks by the armed groups in Afghanistan and Pakistan, which stirred up concerns of the US Department of State. Lastly, we'll tell you about a recent interview of former German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who credited her herself for buying Ukraine some time for war preparedness with the Minsk Agreement. We're here to give you the news and to help you infer the world around you. I'm Taya Banasar Khan, and here is your Daily Dispatch. Today, we'll take you to Germany, where a plot was foiled to overthrow the German state and replace it with a monarchy. Over 3,000 officers were involved in this operation, including the elite anti-terror units, and raided more than 100 different places and properties. The raids were against this group called Citizens of the Reich, the Reichberger, and was one of the biggest operations in recent German history. The group believes in the restoration of German Empire, which existed before the World War I, and its goal is to topple the existing state order in Germany through violent means. The members of the group involved former soldiers, including a retired paratrooper, an ex-MP of the AFD, which is Alternative for Germany, which is a right-wing populist group, opposed to the immigration and the European Union. This incident has once again put the spotlight on the right-wing groups in Europe, which no longer seems to operate at the margins of politics. Let's now take you to South Asia for our major headline. The United States has pledged to degrade the capability and networks of Tehrike Taliban Pakistan, the TTP, and Islamic State Khurasa, the ISK, to conduct the attacks. TTP was formed in 2007 in the former federally administered tribal areas of Pakistan, neighboring Afghanistan by Betullah Mehsud. It is an umbrella organization of different militant groups, which started fighting Pakistani state for partnering with the U.S. in the war against terror. They conducted military operations in tribal regions and wanted to implement the Islamic law in Pakistan. Its current leader is Noor Wali Mehsud. Now, while the Islamic State of Karasa is an affiliate of the Islamic State from the Middle East, ISK operates in Afghanistan, Pakistan, and parts of Central Asia. It has particularly emerged as the biggest threat to internal peace in Afghanistan. After setbacks due to the military operation in the former Fatah region, the Zarbe Azab in 2014, TTB revived itself from 2020 onwards and focused on a more decentralized structure and increasing the attack by over 30% according to some estimates. It has targeted police officials, military convoys, and attacked checkpoints. Now, this statement from the State Department of the U.S. comes in the wake of an assassination attempt on the Pakistani charge the affairs in Kabul claimed by the Islamic State, and also TTP's unilateral ending of ceasefire with Pakistan. Now, Pakistan and the U.S. were allies and worked together against the domestic and international terrorist organizations after the 9-11 attacks. Pakistan also played a pivotal role in Doha Agreement, which facilitated the withdrawal of the international forces from Afghanistan, and also the end of the U.S.'s longest foreign war. Pakistan had entered into a ceasefire agreement with the TTP in June 2022. The armed group ended the ceasefire last month in November due to what it called ongoing military operations in different areas against the group. This armament, implementation of the Sharia law, and reversal of the decision to merge the former Fatah with Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province have been some of the impediments blocking a negotiated settlement between Pakistan and the TTP. Both the terrorist groups have increased their attacks. The Islamic State has strengthened its network in Afghanistan and stepped up its attacks, including on schools, minorities, and worship places. Since the withdrawal of the international forces from Afghanistan in August 2021, it is the single most threat to internal stability in Afghanistan. TTP has been one of the biggest sources of instability and violence in Pakistan. Pakistan lost more than 80,000 people in the war on terror. A destabilized region will also be a threat to the global peace and security. It was in the same war-wrecked region of Afghanistan that the 9-11 attacks were planned. As the threat from the terrorist organizations increases, more concrete efforts will be needed to tackle the menace of terrorism and extremism in this region. Next on The Dispatch, we'll tell you about the interview of former Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, who said that the intention behind the Minsk Agreement was to buy Ukraine some time to arm itself 
and become stronger. Angela Merkel, along with her French counterpart, had played a mediatory role in the Minsk II agreement among Russia, Ukraine, the Organization of Security and Cooperation in Europe, and the leaders of the separatist Donbas region. The 13-point agreement signed in February 2015 called for an immediate ceasefire, disarmament, and the supervision by an international body, the safe access to humanitarian assistance, and also the constitutional reforms for decentralization in the Donbas region. However, it was unable to ensure lasting peace between Russia and Ukraine. Angela Merkel has come under criticism for adopting a conciliatory approach towards Russia and being unable to influence the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, to agree to a political settlement with Ukraine. Now, the former German chancellor had also blocked Ukraine's admission into NATO in 2008 in Bucharest. Responding to this criticism, she said that the Minsk agreement was never followed through, and her assessment that the ceasefire would give Kyiv sufficient time to prepare for a future war has been proven right. The current Russia-Ukraine war started on February 24, 2022, and both sides have accused each other, with Russia claiming NATO's insistence to include Ukraine and expand its borders to Russia was the main cause behind the war. While Ukraine says, as an independent sovereign state, it has a right to decide its political future. Besides the suffering of the civilians and the human toll, the war has caused energy prices to rise and has also created fears of global food insecurity due to the disruptions in the market supply. Also on The Dispatch, we bring you top headlines from around the world. First, Dina Bularte has become the first female president of Peru as the coup attempt failed. Bularte is the sixth president in little more than four years, with her term ending in July 2026. She vows to establish a government of national unity. The former president, Pedro Castillo, was removed after Congress voted to oust him from power after he unconstitutionally declared a temporary closure of the Congress. He was later arrested on Wednesday for a failed coup attempt. Second, South Sudan is reeling under never-ending violence between the armed groups and the military forces due to the ongoing civil war. The UN spokesperson, Stephanie Tremblay, stated that the violence in South Sudan's greater Upper Nile region has forced about 9,000 people to be displaced. According to the UNHCR, since August, about 20,000 people have been displaced, making it the largest refugee crisis in Africa. Displaced persons, 75% of them being women and children, either flee into Sudan or hide along the White Nile River. The civil war erupted in 2013, after a political struggle between the South Sudan's president, Salva Kiir, and vice president, Rik Machar, leading to Machar's removal from office. Now, since then, the civil war between Kiir aligned Dinka ethnicity and Machar aligned newer ethnicity has continued. Third, scientists discovered and recovered oldest yet DNA sample in Greenland. The DNA samples revealed what life was like in the barren polar arctic tip, which was full of forest trees and lush vegetation with many animals around 2 million years ago. The DNA study showed that the region experienced warm climate, with temperatures ranging from 20 to 34 degrees Fahrenheit, higher than that of today, before undergoing extreme climate change. The scientists found elephant-like animals, mastodons, reindeers, birch trees, and more. They were able to extract the genetic information from small and damaged fragments of the DNA using the latest technologies. And lastly, San Francisco City Board retracted a policy approved last week which would allow the police to use weaponized robots in the law enforcement agencies and operations. The decision was revoked yesterday after an initial approval after a week-long popular outcry against the expansion of police powers. The approval remains suspended till the Rules Committee submits a revised policy. Now, the legality and morality of the autonomous weapons and lethal robots are subject of the debate in international law. But in the heart of Silicon Valley, the issue has permeated into domestic law enforcement. That's all, folks. We'll be back tomorrow with more bite-sized news that keeps you up to date with what's going on in the country, the region, and the globe. I'm Tayyab Anasar Khan, and this was your Daily Dispatch.